So this is a quick little video for uh, all those people who have uh, done like I did and got out and bought themselves an amazing Pavoni machine only to find that they've been unable to get uh, any decent coffee out of it. It took me uh, some time to actually achieve a good coffee but um, to be honest it's actually not that difficult. Um, I'll go through a couple of things that I use to get good coffee and uh, hopefully help you guys get some uh, decent coffee out of this amazing machine. Uh, as you can see I've got the uh, Pavoni Piccolo, it's a uh, standard Piccolo, it's about uh, five years old, six years old now and um, I've had no problems at all with the machine, I have it serviced about every two years and it keeps it running quite well. I've got a very basic grinder, some of the uh, coffee connoisseurs out there may, may sniff and uh, scoff at this uh, basic <laughs> Breville grinder but to be honest I've had consistently good grind out of it, uh, sorry it's a Sunbeam. Uh, Sunbeam Cafe Series, that's right. Um, I've had consistently good grind out of it for the whole time I've had it. Uh, I've had other friends who had the same machine that haven't had the same experience, so I guess there's some variation in that. Anyway, um, it, it suits me for my purpose. At the moment, I'm using all press beans, which are just a, you know, a regular bean. Nothing's fancy. Uh, I find the beans, if you get them fresh, they're normally perfect about a week after they've, they've been roasted, maybe uh, a week, week to a week and a half. And um, as you can see, my grinder is on about 15 or thereabouts, uh, and these beans are about a week, uh, so they're about two weeks old. They were uh, roasted about two weeks ago, and I started using them about a week ago. Uh, first grind was at about 17, and as the weeks go on, they'll progressively, uh, the grind position will come down to end up at around about the sort of 13 to 14 mark. But um, that does depend a little bit on how humid the days are and, and uh, the likes, but somewhere in that range you'll find is just about perfect. Uh, you can probably see the coarseness of my coffee there uh, on my tamper. Uh, it's very difficult to judge coffee by eye um, or by feel. Basically, you just got to try it, give it trial and error, and see how you go with it. Um, but as a starting point, probably around the 15 mark would be a good starting point, and you can go upwards or downwards. It does also depend on how you pack the the coffee but uh, we'll go through that next so um, yeah hopefully this uh, video will help you get something out of your uh, your Pavoni machine that you haven't been able to do before all right guys here's the uh, just a quick run through on the grind and the grinder itself uh, as you can see I'm using a uh, the double um, rib head for the Pavoni uh, a lot of people have asked me or mentioned that the, the cup itself just sits in there and they go well, it's going to stick in there like a lot of others do and uh, the answer is no and I'll give you the quick reason why uh, briefly once you fill a group once you fill your uh, your um, porter basket uh, the filter there basically if you wanted to do two copies if it was stuck in there and you've already got a uh, if this head's already hot it's very it would be very difficult to get that out without burning your fingers so Pavoni have been very clever and allowed you to put it in out very quickly so that basically you can grind, even with the hot head, you can grind, take the filter out, get a new filter, a second filter if you've got one, so I've got two, and grind the second one, and then you could use, you can make your coffee, and then remove the filter, and put the second one in that you've already ground, and make your second coffee so that you're not trying to burn your fingers or remove it with a really hot uh, filter. And that's it in simplicity. Now the grind itself, uh, there's no tried or tested method, it's just a, a simple one-off thing. Um, I personally grind, I'll try not to talk while I'm grinding. I get just about to the top as you can see, and it's all loose packed there. Pack, 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 pack it down, and you'll see it drops by, oh, a, a, probably about a third. Probably dropped by about a quarter then. Slightly overfill. And this time I'm just going to slightly tamp it. Down to about probably a uh, third again. We're going to the top. Out. You can see the beans even out when you give it a tap. There's a nice rubber mat on this for, for that purpose. Once again, slight tamp, and you'll see it's probably on about, I 
I'll just tap the edge like that to get it away from the edge, as you can see. So those loose beans there are all the bits that would have gone up around the edge of your machine if you left them there. And you can put those and disappear once you polish them into the top. And as you can see, my coffee is probably about two, two and a half, three mils down from the top, this top edge here. And that allows me to put that in the machine and have the, the top of the filter in my Pavoni or the, the stream head sit just on top of that coffee because you don't want a big gap in between the coffee and the, uh, the shower head. Uh, I'll give it just a little bit. And a final tamp. And I'm not using massive pressure to tamp. I'm just using, I would say, you know, one arm pressure. We'll give it a bit of a spin. It's called polish. And that gets, just makes things look nice and tidy on top. And I just generally rub around the edge so that there's no coffee that's sitting around the edge there that's going to end up in, in the head of my, my machine. Just a couple of other things of note. Uh, read the lights on my Piccolo. And these, these lights actually uh, are pretty much universal, I think, across, across the whole Pavonia range. The orange light means that the machine is on. And uh, the green light, when it comes on, means that the element is actually heating the water. It's normally a good idea not to actually uh, pull the coffee um, while that green light's on because it's still heating up, number one, or it's still pressurizing, number two, to get the right pressure. What you can do to test whether your machine is at the right temperature sorry about the noise there, is just lift the group head, sorry lift the handle so that's just pressurizing again, you can hear it just starting to bubble, right so it's got a softer pressure, and you'll find if you release steam, you'll bring the, the light back on. I normally just release a little bit of steam before I pull uh, the first cup just to make sure that I've got a, um, a, a nicely, perfectly pressurised uh, boiler, not over pressurised, because sometimes it can build up with, uh, with a bit of heat um, and timing while it sits there. So once your light goes off, your machine's ready to uh, make the coffee, just pull a little bit of uh, steam off and you'll find it'll just reboil and you'll get uh, the right pressure in your, uh, in your machine. Uh, the other thing of note there is that my water, I normally fill my water to about probably 5 to 10 mils below the top of that mark and uh, that's how much is left uh, after I've pulled one coffee. So basically if you fill it all the way up to the top, there's no room in the top of the boiler for the uh, water to boil and you'll end up with a low pressure from it. So you've got to have a, a, enough air left in the top of that boiler to allow the pressure to build up properly. So normally you fill it to there or just a bit over there for the first coffee and you'll find that once if you fill it to that point cold when it's pressurized it'll actually fill all that mark will move up and we're almost to the very top of that uh, that indicator there right so here we are just about to put the, the coffee in the pavoni the perfect entry would be i put the, the head in there and you feel just a slight pressure of the coffee touching against the shower head inside the pavoni once i tighten it up should feel just a bit of pressure and as you can see it's moving probably to the about eight o'clock position um, the entry position is it's very hard to do this one-handed I'll just give you this quick look well I just removed that uh, that basket and you can see just on top there so there's little tiny marks on top of the coffee itself and they're just a little tiny mark from the shower head, which is the bit up inside there where the water comes down. So if you're getting those marks on top of your coffee, that means you're probably just about in the right spot when it comes to how high your coffee is into the basket. So basically the, the machine starts or the handle goes in at about that position. And then once it's all the way in, it's at about that position. If you go past that by too far, it means you've probably put not quite enough coffee. And if you don't get it all, that, all the way that far, you've probably put too much coffee. And it'll be very difficult to actually get the uh, group head into the, into the machine. So um, that's pretty much the basics. The Pavoni pull is how I do it in the end.
Abi bir burada ötüyor dedi mi? Bir de sevabı. Şarj mı? Evet. Soft. Get the head just charge and let all the veins get nice and moist. Give it a squeeze. Gentle squeeze. Charge the head and give it a pressure. You see beautiful caramel coffee coming through. Single shot. I normally use a half shot per second, just a to topper. Just before it starts to blonde off. There you go. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Espresso. Now, retexturing milk, you'll read all sorts of things about all sorts of uh, different methods of doing it. Uh, I'm just going to show you my method, and uh, if you like it, great. If you don't, then so be it, but uh, it's a pretty basic method and uh, it doesn't take anything fancy. Uh, I don't use a chilled jug, I just use, ch use chilled milk. I'm actually using soy milk. Um, it's not a product placement plug, but if you want nice, good soy, then uh, Bon Soy is what I've found is uh, the best for getting good coffee uh, out of soy milk. Um, purists would say that's not impossible, but so be it, I can't drink milk, so that's my option. Okay, this is a, a bit of a bird's eye view. It's almost my perspective as I look down on the milk when I use the texture. And um, a couple of things that work for me. Number one is the position. I use this, uh, there's a inner drainage spout, which, uh, which you can see my fingers pointing to just there. And uh, it's this guy here where that's your um, over pressure. It'll, you'll see drips of water come out of the occasion. I use that as a rest for my jug. And I just bent that out so that basically when I push my jug up against it, the nozzle of the, the, the foaming nozzle goes straight in the middle of my, my jug. Uh, nothing fancy there, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, basically when I, when I froth, I, um, I'll just show you how I do it and I'll talk, try and talk my way through it. It's going to be quite noisy, so sorry about the noise. But uh, yeah, so I basically put the uh, milk into the jug, turn the spinning water on, and then just Pull my nozzle down until I'm just below the surface. Then I'm getting a swirl. I'm trying not to get the air bubbles, I'm trying to get very small air bubbles. And you find that the smaller air bubbles come out of the milk. You hear the tone of the milk changes. creamy foam, a little bit of spinning like that helps to release the large bubbles and tapping also brings the large bubbles to the surface. Give it a little bit of time and you'll find you've got perfectly creamy, delicious, silky milk. That's it. Simplicity. I, I, rose the, uh, I lifted the, or I frothed the uh, milk there by about uh, one third of its volume and that gives me uh, about the right texture, about the right volume. If you want uh, cappuccino, then you go a lot further than that. And um, if you want uh, silky latte or macchiato, then something like that, one third volume increase is about right. You notice I'm cleaning my head, uh, the foam head. It's very important that you clean it 
after you've finished coffee because what happens is the milk actually does end up leaching or bleeding back up this uh, the nozzle and ends up sitting in there and uh, if you leave it a long time it will block the nozzle number one and also it'll give you a sore tummy or um, off milk that'll end up in your milk and make uh, potentially make you sick so always just give it a little bleed a little bit of steam after you've made your coffee and it'll keep it nice and fresh and give it a good wipe down so you don't get that milk crust build up on your, uh, on your head Well guys, thanks for watching my uh, brief video on uh, making a Pavoni coffee. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, then uh, yeah, leave me a message. If there's any tips or techniques that you want to add, then also feel free to do so. Always uh, open to suggestions and, uh, and improvements or ways we can make things better. And uh, I hope it's uh, helped, certainly helped you guys make a better coffee out of your uh, Pavoni machine. Once you master it, it'll be something that'll be around in your family for a very long time. Like I said, I've had mine for about five or six years. I've got friends who've had them for upwards of 10 or 15 years, and uh, they just keep going with very little maintenance at all. So, um, yeah, I hope it helps you uh, master great coffee.